My name is Ken Buck and I am a solution architect for Elatech. I would like to take this opportunity to introduce you to a number of new additions to the TCP Converter 2 which were added in various stages adding up to release 18. This video assumes you are already familiar with the Elatech TCP Converter 2. As a result, we will focus primarily on new feature content. If you wish to learn more about how the converter operates, feel free to view the other TCP Converter videos on our YouTube website. Version 2 of our TCP Converter is our main design platform and will continue to evolve. Our vision is to provide solution partners with the ability to remotely configure and manage the converter with minimal on-site involvement. Our initial version of the TC2 configuration discovery tool could only discover converters on the same subnet as the tool itself. In this release, that tool has been enhanced to enable discovery of the converters on multiple subnets specified by the user. In this release, we improved the layout of the web pages, as well as the performance in moving from page to page. In previous releases, a save and reboot was required for each new web page. Now, changes can be saved on each page, with only one reboot required after all the changes are complete. For enhanced security, the ability to invoke SSL for sending card reader data has been added. Syslog has been added to further enhance the ability to monitor the converters remotely. This feature can be used to monitor the device for unauthorized configuration changes or to monitor the status of the connected printer or USB card reader. Additionally, DHCP traffic can be monitored for both the converter and the attached printer. Help has been greatly expanded in an attempt to provide immediate answers to a number of technical questions without the need to th look things up elsewhere. Let's spend a moment showing how cross-subnet discovery works. If you open the TC2 config tool, it will search for converters on the same net as the PC on which the tool is running. If you wish to search other subnets, simply select the new button which has been added in the upper left hand corner of the TC2 config tool labeled file. Selecting file opens the option to import a configuration file. If you click on that option, you will be prompted to navigate to a configuration file which identifies the subnets you wish to search. This slide shows two sample configuration files. The first one instructs the discovery tool to search the 192.168.20 subnet with a mask of 255.255.255. .255 this will search the range of addresses from 192.168.20 through 192.168.20.255 for a total of 256 addresses. Additional lines could be added to the file, which identifies different subnets to search. The second example file instructs the discovery search to, to search the 192.168.2 subnet with a mask of 255.255.00. This will search the range of addresses from 192.168.0.0 to 192.168.255.255 for a total of over 65,000 addresses. A search this large will generate a lot of unnecessary network traffic. Please try to restrict your searches to subnets which are known to contain converters. This slide shows an example of the improved web UI layout. There's now a separate tab for Home, Network USB, RS-232, Logging, and Help. Also shown is the new ability to send card reader data via SSL or as plain text. Note also that the Save and Reboot button has repla been replaced by the Apply button. Reboot is invoked from the home screen, as you will see a little later. This slide shows a configuration page for logging, also known as Syslog. Syslog is an application which is typically available as part of Windows Server. It presents a standardized interface to the network for event logging. Managed print vendors often use syslog to monitor asynchronous status from their printer fleet. A number of converter parameters can be monitored with the message sent via syslog whenever a particular event occurs. For example, if intermittent issues are showing up, power and DHCP could be monitored to determine if the errors are related to time of day. This method is also useful when equipment is placed in locations where tampering might occur. 
For example, on college campuses where engineering students are prone to try their hand at hacking into the converter to change its configuration, or perhaps to borrow the USB card reader. A managed print application which polls the print syslog server for events such as this might be able to proactively deter these activities. There are a number of debug tools built into the converter, as well as two which can be used along with the converter. The first tool is the status web page. On that screen, one can view the converter's kernel and application firmware versions, the status of the connected printer, the status of the connected card reader, and the error log. The converter pings the printer once per second. If the printer does not respond, the status will change from OK to no link to printer, and the error LED will illuminate. Once the printer is connected, the status light will change back to OK, and the error LED will go off. In the future, this status will be added to syslog. The converter monitors the state of the USB card reader once every 10 seconds. If the reader is not detected, the converter status page will show USB disconnected, and once the reader is connected, it will show the type of device connected and whether it uses HID or CDC protocol. This status can also be reported via syslog. Syslog can be used for short-term debug, even if the site did not host a syslog server. For example, I have a TCP converter to send syslog traffic to my PC. If I open Wireshark and configure it to monitor traffic from the converter and to only show syslog, we can use my PC as a debug tool. Let me first show how Wireshark can be used to emulate a syslog server and show the state of the connected USB reader. With Wireshark running, I will unplug the connected USB card reader. Note after a few seconds, the converter reports that the card reader has been disconnected. I will now connect a different reader and we will wait for the converter to report that change. Now I will unplug the CDC reader and reconnect the original reader and again we'll wait a few se seconds for Wireshark to display the syslog status message. Next, let's introduce the Hercules tool. In order to demonstrate some of the attributes which can be monitored, let me navigate to the USB configuration page where we will start with the, configure, the converter configured to behave as a client. Occasionally, field technicians will need to troubleshoot when a card reader data does not arrive at the authentication server. We can use a server tool like Hercules to troubleshoot this behavior. This tool can be freely downloaded from hw-group.com and can emulate either a client or server. With USB configured as client, Hercules is configured as server. In this case, we configure Hercules with the port number of the converter. For the USB, the de default port number is 7777. Select Listen, and Hercules will listen for network traffic with a destination of that port number. When I swipe a few cards, the card numbers appear in the Hercules Receive data window. This tool enables customers to half-split problems between the converter and solution server and can show that the card reader and converter are behaving correctly. Let's go back to the USB configuration page and make the converter operate as server. Hercules will now be configured as client. To make this change permanent, we hit apply and then navigate to the home screen and select reboot. Let's go back to Wireshark and observe the various syslog messages as the converter reboots. The first message we see is that the configuration has been changed. After that, we see that the converter is powering up, followed by its DHCP exchange. Note that we are required to credit the DHCP software developers with a few extra messages. These are only sent at power up in the converter and it's at no other time. Most of the time, power up and DHCP monitoring would not be enabled, which would certainly decrease the amount of syslog traffic. Okay, let's go back to Hercules. Because the converter is now configured as server, we need to configure Hercules as client. So we configure the IP address of the converter 
and keep the same port number for USB. Connect. Select Connect and Hercules will make a connection to the converter. I have a USB card reader connected and when I swipe a few cards, the card number appears in the Hercules Receive Data window. As a last step, let's disconnect. I will then plug in the USB card reader and turn off the connected printer. Let's return to the status page and observe that the card reader and printer are absent. Note that the error log shows the errors displayed from opening and closing the port while the converter was configured for server mode. Messages such as this can provide insight into unexpected network behavior. Thank you for watching and listening to this presentation. If you have any feedback or questions, feel free to contact us via phone or email. Shown here is our contact information for the U.S. and for the rest of the world. Also shown is our email address for any support questions you may have. Thanks again for watching.